There was a song which I want to sing, and I didn't begin with the song because I wanted to talk a little bit about it first. It's a song of Guru Nanak's, which my guru sang in uh, America. It was at Carnegie Hall, which is a very famous hall in uh, New York. And uh, he told a friend of his that he was going to sing this song, and the friend was worried that he might get the, have them the audience might introduce the vegetable motif, as the great English humorist P.G. Woodhouse put it. Um, there, this was something that editors later took out of the autobiography. You know, we, we sell the first edition because there have been over a thousand changes in it. And little changes like this, which were so touching and so humorous, but they thought it wasn't dignified. I've decided that, no, I want the way Master wrote it. Anyway, he sang this song, and he said that music, excuse me, is a universal language. So he sang this song for an hour and a half, and people's lives were converted. Everybody was just so lost in that, because not just the music, he of course projected his great love and joy. Afterwards, he was in his little interview room, and a man came in with a gun in his hand, he threw the gun on his desk. He said, I could kill you for what you've done to me. He said, I can't go back to that way of life any longer. And he just stormed out. But he was a, a gunman, and the uh, master has changed his life. He changed many people's lives of that level and on up. One time after a lecture, it was during the Depression, and uh, he talked about how it was wrong for rich people to take advantage of poor people. And he named a few names. And people said afterwards, don't go home alone. He said, I'm not afraid. God is with me. He was going toward Penn Station. And in a darkened corner, suddenly he felt something in his back. And somebody said to him, why did you say those things about those people? In a very menacing tone of voice. Master turned around. He said, all are God's children. And God is not pleased when his rich children take advantage of his poor children. Imagine talking to a man who's been sent to murder you. Then he looked into the man's eyes. He said, you're not happy living the way you do. Why are you doing that? I demand that you change. I demand that Satan come out of you. The man began trembling all over. He dropped his gun. He said, what have you done? I was sent to shoot you. I can't go back to that way of life any longer. Well, this song, which, he was, which is the first song he sang, is Hey Hari Sundara, Oh God Beautiful. He sang it in American, in English. And I remember in Calcutta many years later, I was in a taxi and the Sikh driver had a little uh, image of Guru Nanak there. And I said that uh, in America, in the West, we love to sing this song of Guru Nanak, this chant, uh, hey Hari Sundara. I was so pleased by that taxi driver's answer. He said, oh, naturally, sir, what would life be worth if it were not uh, for the joy of singing to God? Now, I don't think that you'll find a taxi driver in the West who would make me that kind of answer. In the streets of a big city, many people in India take it for granted, and it's so beautiful that they do. He Hari Sundara, He Hari Sundara, He Hari Sundara, He Hari Sundara, Tere Charana Parashirshana Mau, Tere Charana Parashirshana Mau, He Hari Sundara, He Hari Sundara, He Hari Sundara, He Hari Sundara, Bano Bano Me Shamala Shamala. Bano bano me shamala shamala Giri giri me unnata unnata Giri giri me unnata unnata Sarita sarita chanchala chanchala Sarita sarita chanchala chanchala Sagara sagara gambhira hai Sagara sagara gambhira hai he Hari Sundara, He Hari Sundara, Tere Charana Parashirshana Mau, Tere Charana Parashirshana Mau, 
हे हरि सुंदर हे हरि सुंदर हे हरि सुंदर हे हरि सुंदर सेवक जनु के सेव सेव कर सेवक जनु के सेव सेव कर प्रेमी जनु के प्रेम प्रेम कर प्रेमी जनु के प्रेम प्रेम कर दुखी जनो के वेदना भेदना दुखी जनो के वेदना भेदना जोगी जनो के आनंद है जोगी जनो के आनंद है ओ गॉड ब्यूटीफुल ओ गॉड ब्यूटीफुल ओ गॉड ब्यूटीफुल ओ गॉड ब्यूटीफुल At thy feet, O oh, I do bow. At thy feet, O oh, I do bow. O oh, God, beautiful, O oh, God, beautiful. O oh, God, beautiful, O oh, God, beautiful. In the forest, thou art green. It is a joy to sing to God in the forest thou art green, in the mountains thou art high, in the mountains thou art high, in the river thou art restless, in the river thou art restless, in the ocean Thou art grave, in the ocean thou art grave. O oh God, beautiful, O oh God, beautiful. To the serviceful thou art service, to the serviceful thou art service. To the lover thou art love, to the lover thou art love. To the sorrowful, thou art sympathy. To the sorrowful, thou art sympathy. To the yogi, thou art joy. To the yogi, thou art bliss. O oh God, beautiful, O oh God, beautiful. It is to that God. I bow in you. Always remember who you really are. You are not this person with family, with children, with job, with worries, all that. That is not who you are. He is in you. And when you look at other people, remember, he is also in them. And when you love other people, remember, it is his love that you are seeing in those other people. And when those whom you love die, and you think, oh, how cruel, why did God take that person away? He takes you away so that you will always remember that it was him you were loving in that form. He is your only friend. He is your only beloved through all eternity. And when you can learn that, all the sweet memories, I your, all your lifetimes will come to you as a memory of all the mistakes you made seeking that one truth and always thinking, I'd find it here, I'd find it there. Being beaten down, sometimes a beggar, it's spurned by everybody, sometimes a rich person looked up to by everybody, but always the same person, God in all those forms. And I too in this life, when I think of my guru, when I think of the late years I spent with him. What golden memories. Because he was not just a man to me. I knew that he was my infinite beloved who had come to me in that form. And yes, he scolded me sometimes, but it wasn't only that. There was so much sweetness to him. I remember toward the end of his life, he just looked at me with great love and joy, he said, you have pleased me very much. I want you to know that. 
It was a great joy to me to hear those words. And I knew that it was God that I had pleased through him. And I have prayed all my life to be able to please him. This is the message I want to give to you, not some pompous, dogmatic philosophy. I want to stir you with love for God. I'm not trying to convert you except to your own self. I want you to fall in love with that higher self, which is God, with the Divine Mother who is in you. That is what is all about. You can be following different paths. When I feel that people belong on another path, I don't try to grab them. I know one time here in Delhi back in 1959, people were saying to me, you know, Ramakrishna, a mission here, many people go there. Why do we stand outside their services and as people come out, give them brochures telling about our services? I said, don't you dare do such a thing. If they have found inspiration there, let them find their inspiration there. We want to reach people, but we want to rob people. One person used to come, he was an Indian teacher, he used to come to our place and try to take people away from me. And I said to him one time, this isn't the proper way of doing it. Listen, Swamiji, it's all God. Well, yes, it's all God, but God comes in different ways. I didn't say anything more. I wasn't going to argue with him. But that's not the right way to do it. God comes in many ways. Whatever path you follow, if you follow it with your heart, I bless you. My guru didn't come to create a mission to draw people to him. He created a mission to serve other people and to bring them to that infinite one who is everywhere. And if you choose to follow God through one path or another, it can be Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, this guru, that guru, wonderful. How much better than seeking Maya? Just so long as you are seeking him, that is already a great plus. Let me read to you, and it's taken me a long time to get around to this one now. The number is 174. Sir, a student asked him, Is everyone conscious in the astral world? Not everyone, he replied. People of worldly consciousness enter into a sort of gray mist. Some of them are vaguely conscious, depending on the sensitivity of their perception. But for many of them it is like a dream. They aren't quite sure what is going on. If your intuition is even slightly developed, however, especially if you've meditated and prayed some in this life, but also if you've served others, for instance, even as a soldier who fought heroically in battle for the sake of his, his country, you will find after you leave this world that that other world is far more beautiful than this one and extremely enjoyable. It's certainly, if you feel an attachment to this world, good to think about the beauty of that world, because it's so much more. It isn't only, mind you, it isn't only that it's much more beautiful, but your own feelings are more purified, and you're able to enjoy that world much more. There's much more happiness because you are happy. But it isn't that everybody goes to heaven, of course. I mean, a woman who likes to argue will not be happy if she finds herself in the astral world. She'll look around and say, well, who's there, who is there to fight with? People like that have to go to the other place, you might say, but there is no one other place. Everybody is drawn to that level where his own consciousness is. And some people may be um, dimly conscious uh, of heaven or of hell, but it's all temporary. Don't worry about it in the sense that you will be there forever. There's a very interesting life of a Catholic nun. She used to have experiences of people who had lived in this world and then were in the astral world. And uh, she was able to talk to people later and they'd, they'd check it up and it turned out that it really was somebody who died when and as she said. And one thing that really struck me was that some people who were in purgatory, not even in heaven, had been monks. Their lives had been dedicated to God. And yet, there was so much sin consciousness they had drilled into them, a great mistake. And so they somehow died with a sense of guilt 
because they had not been as obedient to their superior as they should have been, and they had done one thing wrong or another thing wrong. I thought, what a pity. I know there was one disciple of my guru, a student more than disciple, but uh, his name was Mr. Brockman. He was an old man, an architect, a very dignified man, and very devoted to Master. But I visited him in the hospital before he died, and he was there saying, oh, I've done many bad things in my life. Well, I saw Master later, and I told him what he'd said. He shook his head very sadly. He said, he shouldn't have said that. And then he said, but he's coming back. He's, I, he's around here now. In his astral body, Mr. Brockman was being attracted to Master and was uh, looking for forgiveness and so on. But mind you, yes, you've done wrong things in this world. You've done probably wrong things in this life. Not many can look back and say, I've done nothing bad. Master said of Sister Gyanamata, I have searched her life and not found one sin. That's quite a statement. But you can't say that that's probably true for very many people. Forget it. That wasn't you doing it. That's why he said, give even the wrong that you do to God. Remember, God finally is the doer. And if you love him in all experiences, it doesn't mean you can't love people. Always try to keep that extra little thought in your mind that I am loving God in these people. And you will find there will be a freedom. And when those people turn you down, betray you, yes, it happens. How many times my heart has suffered for that. And yet I have always maintained an equilibrium because I know it's God. God teaching me, God helping me, God always reminding me that he is the one. When you look back over your life, remember the good things, don't remember the bad, and think that God did it all through you. Keep golden memories, and you will see, just as this song, it's curious how this song came to me, I was just driving across the street, and there it was. That's why I say, I don't write these songs, they aren't mine. But words, melody, everything was right there just as I was driving across the street and going home. I think you will like it. I hope you do. It's a very Western and modern kind of uh, harmony in this song. It's called Memories. Joy to you. Evening garden, silent fountain, glimmering stars in its day. Shine.